Today we are going to use the Stream Simulator at MIPS Programming. Let's get started. Here is an example of the equation, which is to create a program to be run in Swiss Stream, which is allow user to input 10 random numbers. The program should be able to display the number that have been stored in ascending order, the sum, the average, and the median value. The data is a variable declaration section. There are a variable name and also the data type. In array, we use 40 which is multiply of 10 and 4 because in MIPS programming, we have to declare the size of array in bits. The size of one integer space is equal to 4 bits. We use dot space as data type to provide some space for the array. To print the string, we use dot assist as data type and put the string within the quotient braces after the data type. As the value at data type float is the value that we are going to use later. We move to dot tag section. This is where we do all the logic and calculation. In main function, we load constant value 10 into register T1 and load a pointer to array into register A1. In loop function, we minus 1 from the value in register T1 as the loop counter or loop update. Constant value 4 is used as the system call code to print a string. In this case, we want to print a string name from. As we load value 5 as the call system code, the program is going to read a value from user. Please be notice that this opcode is equivalent to syn syntax in C++ language in line 26. We store whatever value the user enter into the array. To move to the next element of array, we add 4 to register A1. Hence, we check the condition for the loop. If the value, if the value in register T1 is not equal to 0, it needs to go to loop function. If it is still 0, you need to load 9 into T1 and also into T2. You need to load a rate. Next, we move to loop1 function. At first, we need to check the condition. If register 2 is 0, we need to go function name here. If it is not equal to 0, we need to minus 1 from the value at register T2 and then load to value of first element into register T5 while second element into register T6. To move to the next element of array, we add 4 into register A1. If the value of T5 is less than or equals to T6, you need to go to loop 1. If it is else, we are going to swap them as state. In function here, we load the array into register A1 and need to minus 1 from the value in register T1 and 
we need to store that particular value in the same register which is register T1. Please be noticed that this is a statement for loop update. Next, we load system call sign4 which is to print a string name output to the console in the line 52. We load array pointer into register A1 and load value 10 into register T1. Basically, the loop to function is to print the number in ascending order. We use 1 as the system call code to print an integer. Line 59 until line 61 is to assembly code to print the space between the number. Then, add immediate value 4 to move to the next element of array. In line 64, is to check the condition. If the register T1 is not equal to 0, they will return back to loop 2 and it will keep repeating until it meets the true condition. In total function, we are going to calculate all the number entered by the user. As the same as above, we need to load 9 into register T1 and load the array into register A1. We need to load the element of array into register T5 and add register T7 and T5. Please be notice that the register T7 is a cumulative value of the number. And we met a condition which is if the register T1 is not equal to 0, we need to go to loop 3. Loop 3, we need to subtract 1 from the value of the register T1 and save it to the same register name as T1. And we need to add 4 to register A1 and save to the same name register as A1. Then we load an input integer into register T5 and we meet again with the condition if register T1 is not equal to 0, we need to go to loop 3 back. And if the value of register T2 is equal to 0, we go to the print function. We move to print function. In line 84 until line 88 is the code to print the string. As we store the cumulative value in register T7, we move that particular value in register A0 and print into the console. Please be note that when print integer, we have to move that particular value in register A0. In average function, we move the value in the register T7 into register F6. It is to convert integer to float number. Then, we load floating number FP1 and FP2 into register F2 and F4 respectively. We need to add, add those floating number. As we have convert integer to floating number, we have to tell the simulator either it is single precision or double precision. As stated in 9102, 
then we start the calculation which is divide. In line 104 to line 106 is to print string with the system call code 4. To print a floating number, we have to move that value into register F12. Please be note that different system call code use different register as argument. Median function. Again, we load array into register A1 and add immediate value of 16 into register A1 because we are going to retrieve back the fifth element of array and store it in register T5. Add another 4 into register A1 to retrieve the sixth element and store into register T6. As mentioned before, we need to convert the integer if first number dealing with float number. Don't forget to set the position into single or double. Line 1 to 5 to 1 to 7 is to print a string, while 1 to 8 until line 130 is to print floating number. To terminate the program, we use syscall, system call code 10 to exit the program. That's all for today. Hope you can learn something from this video. Thank you. Hi, I'm Duniana Bintiswardi from uh, I'm a student from FTMK and I'm from One BIDZ. Hi, my name is Faria Tudusna. I am from Faculty of Information and Technology and I am from One BIDZ. I am Vivian from Faculty of Information and Communication Technology, One BIDZ.